Hi, I'm Ferdy Serum, and I want to give you a high-level overview of what we're doing in the ECECD data casting project. Our agenda is to look at the program goals and components, to look at the research that supports our approach, the opportunities that provides, the funding and support that's going to be available, and then determining our next steps. Our program is focused on three things. We're going to conduct a needs assessment of the early childhood centers, to find out the strengths and weaknesses they have for their internet, devices, and the support. We're going to provide access to the early learning network content using data casting receivers and support families at home. We're also going to identify, purchase, and deliver technology upgrades that are requested by the centers. But let's look at the research that supports this use because the idea of early childhood and technology sometimes don't go together as we know that screen time at too young an age can be damaging. Um, so here are the guiding principles that allow us to get the benefit and avoid the downsides. The first guiding principle is that when used appropriately through active use, technology can be a tool for learning. And we provide families with projects that can begin in the centers and continue at home. Three examples that we do are the story maps, family recipes, pocket canvas, and micro seasons. All of those are done in story maps. We provide the training and support that's necessary for parents and students to experience active learning. And this active use is when children use the technologies uh, to use meaningful experiences in storytelling. Um, and so these are the types of experiences we're providing that can provide this deep and meaningful engagement. The second principle is that technology should be used to increase access to learning opportunities for all children. And this especially is important for still children with special needs, children in English language learner backgrounds, children living in poverty, rural children, those are the people we're serving. Our approach is to provide projects that are intergenerational and intercultural. We're connecting local and global themes through the activities we do. And our projects are all built around universal design for learning, which is something that is very powerful and not as widely known as it should be certainly not widely known in K-12 and perhaps not widely known in early childhood. So because of this, we are having activities in all languages, including English, Spanish, and Diné, and where we're permitted in Pueblo languages as well. The third guiding principle is that this technology should be used to strengthen what's happening in real life in families. So the story maps are serving as digital portfolios which can document student learning and can provide a connection for conversations between the providers, the staff, and the families. Our projects are strengthening communication and connection between these folks. And finally, technology is more effective when it's used in a certain specific way. We're using the interactive family learning software to show how this uh, use ties into the research on media use and children. And co-viewing is really what is most important. The data casting, as you'll see, allows this co-viewing to happen at home, even in homes that don't have enough internet connection to be able to download and watch video. Here's a glimpse at the family learning software, which is going to be provided to every family that takes a data casting unit, especially those who, as mentioned before, may not have a good internet connection. And it's also available for free right now using this form. All of our coaches are given the form. All of these forms are given to the centers. So Family Learning Company has donated lifetime subscriptions to this software. When a family signs up for it, up to six members can be using it at the same time in English, Spanish, and with support for Diné. And they get to keep it forever. So we're starting with this right now. This is one of the things we want to showcase in the centers. As far as data casting goes, there's mystery about this. I like to use the metaphor of an escalator. Uh, nobody gets mad at an escalator for only going down or only going up. And data casting is allowing content to be downloaded into the little box that you see there using digital TV waves. It doesn't use a TV, but it sends computer uh, content that can be accessed on a tablet or any digital device that can use Wi-Fi. It's just not using the internet to do it. There is no way to get content back. There is no up escalator. So uh, we just have to know that what we're doing is providing basically a digital library. It works like this. For a kid who has broadband, the teacher or the school puts content up on the internet. 
and the student accesses it from home using the internet. But during the pandemic, we realized that people who don't have the internet can't do it. So this is another way of getting the content into those homes using the data casting receiver. And we're providing both the receivers and the tablets that contain the family learning software, but can also be used to access this content. Who's it good for? Well, it's really good for anybody, depending on your needs. If you have four or five people trying to share a Wi-Fi connection, um, it's not going to support all those people, where a data casting unit could support hundreds of people at the same time. And you get access to a library of digital content, including the Moments Together videos. So our opportunities for engagement with San Juan College programs and other programs that are similar are three. The Early Childhood Program certainly is going to be great, and we're looking to establish centers that can be demo facilities where we can provide all of the content that's available to centers and families, and they can come try it out, and we can provide workshops in those facilities and train people to deliver them as well so that they can become pure coaches. The geospatial program is a particularly rich opportunity because we make extensive use of all of the ESRI capabilities and it provides for work-based learning for people who are developing in that career pathway. So we go to the complete limit of what can be done with ESRI software, starting with the easiest, the story maps, and going all the way to the back-end databases and programming. When it comes to the IT program, the digital divide adoption opportunities and broadband deployment opportunities are contingent upon staff, and local staff does not exist in sufficient quantities. People that are going to be deploying broadband are going to be brought in from other states. But there's good news. It's going to be 18 months before those contracts really start having people on the ground, and it takes six to nine months to train people. Therefore, we should be able to engage in career development opportunities for the IT program to take advantage of the hundreds of millions of dollars coming into our state. So the funding that we're looking at now there is available ECECD funding right now. We can provide equipment for the centers, stipends for people who are helping us, stipends for the coaches. In round two of our funding, which we're intending to submit in the end of August, we're going to be extending what we're doing in the three counties that we're serving now to all 33 counties because these needs exist everywhere. We're going to be looking at developing the curriculum for community IT needs audits, digital navigators, and work-based learning in the fields of GIS, digital media production, and IT. So that's where we're heading. The next steps, we're going to be coming up and doing a, a presentation up in Bloomfield on the 29th, and uh, hope to come up on the 28th for an on-site meeting to make our plans for what we're going to do. So we're going to be scheduling a webinar to uh, go over this ahead of that meeting. We'll be looking at participation in early childhood uh, by your students in the college, we want to prepare that proposal for funding, and we want to consider the next steps that are needed to tightly integrate with the workforce development aspects that are, are associated with early childhood and technology. I hope this has been a good overview for you, and I look forward to joining you on the webinars and working together to make these opportunities available everywhere. Thank you so much.